Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So as you can see here, I'm back to work on the flamed neck chips in. And I ended up doing a little bit of a polishing job on the fretboard itself just to bring out that inlay a little bit more. And uh, you know, using the uh, let's see what I do, 180, 400, 600, 800, and then I went with the. Uh, uh, 1,025 or 2,000 grit sandpaper, I can't remember. And as you can see that uh, buffing it out really, really made this neck pop. Just the big difference in the different colors and in the inlay itself. And it came out really, really nice. And I'll bring you in as a close-up so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, this thing just popped just like if it was, you know, polished paint or, or you know, clear coat. So I ended up doing a little bit of work on this thing, uh, asked, uh, had a question that was asked about the inlays and uh, as far as like removing them, uh, I ended up having some chip out and you kind of see how thin the inlay is uh, in that in the last video when I was removing the frets. So the question was, you know, is, are these inlays going to crack if you adjust the truss rod, you know, like if you're adding a forward or a back bow to it? Uh, you know, whatever is needed for the uh, setup of the guitar. And looking at how thin the inlays are, I think they would be a little bit more flexible if they were on the thin side than they would be if they were on the thicker side. So I've adjusted the truss rod a couple times on this thing to get the neck straightened out, and I haven't noticed any other hairline cracks or anything else going on. So as you see, I'm starting to install some frets. Now, what I'm rubbing on the fretboard right now is a wax paste. It's a clear wax paste that uh, I'm trying to protect the inlay and the fretboard from the CA glue that I use. So that if there's any squeeze out or anything, usually you, you notice it a little bit on a regular fretboard, but you don't notice it on a... Um, or you will notice it more on something that's got a little bit more inlay to it because you're looking at it more. You know, you're seeing the detail that's in the fretboard because of the inlay. Your eyes are drawn to it. So if there's any like squeeze out or any problems with CA glue coming out from underneath the fret, you probably will notice that pretty well. So using a little bit of a wax paste is what you want, not a liquid. A wax paste will help keep the fretboard clean from any type of a squeeze out or anything from the glue. Now what I'm using is I start off using a thick CA glue and I noticed that it wasn't really going into the fretboard that much, you know, the groove for the fret itself. Uh, so I changed to a thin. Now I could have used a, uh, a water, or not, sorry, sorry, I switched to a medium, not a thin. The thin is more of like watery and that gets all over the place. That kind of, uh, you know, a drop of that is actually goes a long way. It seeps into the fretboard, but you also can't really get the feel of how much is going in there until you get a fret and you get a lot of squeeze out. So what I used is the medium seems to suit me a lot better. Uh, it covers the top opening of the groove for the fret itself and then as the fret gets pushed in it spreads it out and pushes it to the bottom of the groove for the fret and uh, you know they say that you got X as adding more sustain to your guitar I don't know if that is true or not but uh, you know I haven't had any problems with it so it works out pretty good so I'm going to continue to put in some frets now you want to make sure that if uh, once you push the fret in and you get the fret where you want it, I end up having to readjust the tension on the clamp a little bit, so I push the fret in. Uh, the new frets are going in tight, which that's great. The old frets came out uh, pretty freaking easy, and that wasn't so good. So I'm using Stumac, um, or these, these are medium large, medium wide, or something like that frets. So they're uh, kind of beefy, not really, really beefy, but they're beefy enough. Everything looks out pretty good. Wipe off the excess of the wax. 
And remember, if you're going to do something like this, using a paste is the best way. So I go with a different angle over here, and you can kind of see how I'm doing this. Cleaning out whatever dust particles or anything that's inside the groove itself, blow it out, measure my fret uh, before cutting. Now I figured out with the fret nippers, you know, the tang nipper, that uh, if you hold it the right way, you're able to nip off the tang and not have a burr underneath the fret itself to where you have to file it. And I've been kind of watching and eyeballing how I've been doing this. It's been working out great. I haven't had any troubles at all. So I'm letting the fret hang over the edge just a little bit to where I feel it. And then I go ahead and cut the other side. And I bring it back just a little bit so it hangs over just a tiny bit. Cut, nip, and start installing the fret. So again, I will use the wax paste on each side of the fret opening on the fretboard just to protect that inlay and to keep any squeeze out of CA glue to not soak into the wood or anything else with the inlay itself because uh, it would be a pain to get rid of. Now that I actually polished the fretboard and stuff, you know, you want to keep it looking nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and put the paste wax on. Make sure I get both sides nice and even. Do not get the wax in the slot in the fretboard for the fret itself because that will keep the fret from sticking with the CA glue. The CA glue is not going to dry or stick to the wax. That's the reason why you use it on each side of the fret opening on the fretboard to keep it from soaking into the wood or anything else that you don't want that wet, that uh, CA glue to get into. So again, using the medium set CA glue going down the center, and I can't see it, sorry about that. Had a little bit of a touch-up spot that I had to fill in that was in the beginning of it. There was a little bit of an air bubble in the tube. And then I go ahead and start uh, installing the fret. I end up putting the fret on, I'll cap it down a little bit to get it started, and make sure that when I use the clamp it doesn't go off on an angle or anything. And then clamp it down. You know, once that's uh, once I feel that it's it's secure enough to clamp, I will clamp it down. This clamp is pretty nice. Uh, you can adjust the tension on the lock to where you have to really squeeze it and I'll push that fret down. The only thing is, it gets a little bit harder the further down you go on a set neck because uh, well, it's a set neck and you have a body on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and get this thing done and uh, off to the next steps of uh, working on this guitar. I have a few things that I've ordered that I want to talk about at the uh, you know, later on in the video. So here I'm using the fret end angle file. Love this thing. It makes it a lot easier than trying to do it freehand with a larger file that with a set neck it's you know a little difficult not to try not to try to hit the uh, body and when I mean not to try you got to hold it kind of on an angle and above the bottom of the neck where it could reach the body to where it's not going to scratch dig into your paint or this just works out perfect it's got an angle uh, cut in the block the file is locked into that angle and uh, it leaves just enough file of the file to go all the way down to the body without head hitting scarring scratching or anything it looks are really nice and it does a clean job too like I said it doesn't help much as far as the sharp ends go because it kind of makes a sharp uh, pyramid shape going up uh, to the tip of the uh, tip of the fret and uh, it just works out really nice this I purchased it's a fret crowning and polishing tool and it works out pretty good it's a block with a uh, tube roll two round pieces of metal on each side of it. The sandpaper that it comes with is got a foam padding on it so it acts as a cushion as you're going over the frets. You're not really putting too much pressure but you are doing a lot of back and forth movement as far as going up and down the neck goes to get it to round off with the aggressive sandpaper. And you gotta kinda go over it a couple of times to get a nice crown. Um, it just doesn't happen really, really fast. Although once the crown is made, the next steps of the sandpaper that this comes with 
makes it a lot easier to get a nice polished uh, uh, fret out of it. And, and I think it only goes up to, uh, I don't know, I can't remember what the grit, uh, 320 I think it goes up to. So as you see here, it, it crowns them pretty nice. It's not too bad. And it also takes care of that sharp fret end that the file left behind uh, as you go through. Now it doesn't take care of the corners of the fret, that the corners are a little bit sharp, uh, that you still have to go and file that down by hand. So now I'm going with the little bit lighter grit. It's a 180. Uh, it doesn't feel like a 180 grit sandpaper like you normally would feel. This doesn't feel very coarse, but it does get the job done as far as giving you a uh, you know the crowning and the polishing. Um, and then I go into the steps with the next sandpaper as well. So right now I'm just feeling the frets a little bit just to see how smooth they are and they're actually pretty smooth. So then I'll grab the 1000 grit uh, fret eraser and go over that just to remove whatever sanding marks that are left behind from the last uh, sandpaper with the uh, uh, polishing and crowning block or crowning and polishing block. And then I'll go over it with the Dremel and some chrome polish or mag aluminum polish and shine these guys up really nice and get a really, really nice finish on it. Uh, I'm really surprised at how this came out at the end. The fret crowning tool that I ended up getting, uh, and polishing tool, it actually worked out really nice. I'm really happy with the results of with the way the frets work, and it works pretty fast too. It's not a real slow process. Uh, it's a lot faster than doing it with the file, and uh, still comes out nice. 
All right, so I'm kind of stuck where I'm at with the chips in right now. We can't really do much with it until more of the parts that I ordered come in. I've got a little bit of an unboxing to do right now. Some stuff that I ordered from Strumac. Yeah, grabbed a few things, uh, some for this guitar here and then others for just stock up on some extra parts that I can have sitting around over here. Now, I've got a little bit of, of a scheme going on with this guitar. Um, Instead of using the you know, gold hardware and stuff, I wish I could find some white powder coated uh, bridge and tail piece. And I'm wondering if I take take apart a um, tuna mag bridge and bring it over to my buddy to see if he can powder coat, powder coat them white. Now I don't know if that's gonna change anything with the sustain of the guitar. I know a lot of you guys out there think, um, you know, paint or this or that kind of affects sustain of the strings of the guitar when you're you know when you're plucking them um i don't know if this would probably do that or not but although you know a lot of the finishes that are on tail pieces and bridges and stuff like that are um powder coated you know black so who knows we'll find out so what i'm going to do with this thing is i got a little bit of a color scheme going on to where it's going to be white and gold well that's basically what the way the guitar came, right? But instead of having cream-colored pickup rings, uh, I went with straight white. So I gotta wait for those to come. I also ordered some white bobbin pickups that have gold pole pieces in them. Um, so that's gonna be white. And then the poker chip for the three-way switch, uh, that's gonna be white. Same with the four knobs and the uh, three-way switch top. Um, those are also going to be white as well. So I'm hoping it kind of blends in a little bit. Now i got to wait for those parts. Some of them are going to come, I think, tomorrow. But the pickups, I think, are coming uh, at the end of the week, maybe. So i got to wait for those. So let me do a little bit of an unboxing over here and open these things up, see what's going on here. Get my trusty knife. I gotta clean it and it's got wax all over it. I gotta clean it and uh, sharpen it a little bit more. Alright, there's one. Alright, so what I've got here is I ended up ordering a bunch of already, um, oh, this prints are pretty heavy. Oh, they bag it really nicely, too. Hmm. So what I ended up doing is I ordered some uh, frets that are already bent as far as the radius goes. Some are 16, some are a 12 here, and they're 24 pieces. This is a 12 inch radius, and this is a high Y. Uh, this is a wide pyramid at 12. And then I got some 16s here, which is a wide high and a wide pyramid. I noticed that some of the guitars that I've been working on, uh, the frets are a little bit different. And what I've been doing is just been compensating for what I have as far as fret material goes, replacing what's already on there. I'll take the mic and mic out the old fret uh, after it's been taken off the fretboard and just see what the outcome is of them um, and then go through my stock as far as the fret material goes and see what I've got that I can use uh, that's close or exactly the same. So here I ordered some Pelucins. Pelucin? Pluc yeah, Pelucin, right? Uh, locking tuners for this guitar, for the Gibson. Now, I don't know if you can tell a difference or not, but the gold of these two are not the same. This is more of a rose gold, and these are more of a gold gold in color. So let's see here if I can find something here. Let's see. Let's see this is the same. Uh, yeah, these two are the same. Where's the other one I dropped? All right, so if you look at the rings on these sleeves, this is a rose gold in color, and this is a regular gold gold, so there's a difference in there. 
So I want it to have at least all the hardware matching in color on this thing. You know, it kind of looks a little funny when you're going with, you know, a scheme of gold, but yet it's not gold. It's an actual um, reddish, pinkish type thing. So that's it for now. I basically have to wait for more parts to come in. And somebody asked me on uh, one of my videos if you know if I were to sell these, how much I would sell them for. I'd probably sell them for like 15 bucks for the set. Whoopee, right? They're not really anything special. So I'm done here for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is the kit that I ended up picking up for doing the fret crowning. It comes with a small leveling block that's already got a piece of sandpaper on it. It's very, very light. So you might have to add a little bit of pressure on it in order to uh, level the way you want it to level. It is square, I mean, it's flat. There's no, you know, nothing really wrong with this. It's just, I think they made it out of pine. Yeah, it's very soft wood. So this is like a pine material. This one here, um, I'm not sure if it's pine or not. Uh, they did coat it with something. And embedded are two round cylinders. Well, not cylinders, because they're solid. Uh, and this is supposed to like get between over the top and um, the sides of the fret. And with the pads of sandpaper that they give you, that's supposed to act as a cushion. So when it rides over the fret, it's not just smoothing it out, it's kind of riding over, over, and over. It works pretty good. Uh, I really don't think I'll be using this block for too much of anything. It's just not, yeah. Plus, I've been using more of the radius blocks for doing my leveling, and uh, yeah, it just works out a lot better. All right, guys, you guys take it easy. Have a good one, and that's it for the chips, and for now, that's going to have to sit for a bit and uh, until I get more of my parts in, and I guess start doing some assembly not too bad I, I I kind of was a little bit um, the way some of the frets were starting to pop or not the frets but the inlay was starting to pop out I really thought this was going to be a real big issue to where when I put the new frets in more of the inlays are going to want to pop out because of the gap between the fret and the inlay is you know the frets went in pretty tight. I glued them down anyways, but they went in pretty tight compared to the way that the old frets came out pretty easily. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. It turned out really, really nice. I do have to go and knock the, just the corner edges down a little bit. It seems like he, from this area here to get a little bit sharp. But as far as the rest of it goes, it seems to be pretty nice and the ends of the frets where you're using the file on an angle the crowning tool kind of took care of a lot of those sharp edges so when you rub your finger going like this across the top of the fret where it edges with the angle it is not sharp at all it actually feels really really nice just these little corners here I got kind of knock off those little ears or tabs or whatever the hell is going on with them that's not a big deal so you guys take it easy. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, dislike, I don't care. Subscribe, whatever. Um, it's up to you guys. You can send these videos just to help you guys out if you're trying to do a job and uh, wanting to know how to do something or just curious to see what I'm doing. That's it. Take it easy.